crisis in Venezuela. That's what we hear always, everywhere. Venezuela uh, is a country, but uh, we hear this, you know, this last week was something incredible. Oh, yes, last week, I think, first of, first of September was something, again, like uh, you, you put on the television and uh, try to, to see what is around the world, and uh, the first name that comes is Venezuela, what's happening over there, and of course, so it comes back, uh, oh, something is happening, because before, when something good is happening in Venezuela, the media around here in Australia, they don't even know that Venezuela is a country and exists as a country. But uh, just started with uh, a bit of uh, up from the opposition, it's uh, something that spreads all around, something really is going there. So, then, but the, the truth of the matter is that this is not new, okay? What is been happening in Venezuela and when the media, because I, I put, very sadly I am, because I, I organize, I prepare before a PowerPoint, which I, I wanted to help me and uh, follow with you uh, the structure of what I wanted to say. Because in fact, when, when we say about that situation, is uh, just my point here is, is the crisis of Venezuela or is a media attack on Venezuela? That's the point and that's where we should start from, okay? And then, this is not new. We have, we've been living in, in, in a revolution, in a process of change in Venezuela that started 17 years ago. So it's a very new process in revolution when we think about. But that from those 17 years, this is going, those attacks in Venezuela have come on, 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 on. Okay? So people should be just like uh, used to, to have this. So 17 years ago, in, in, my, in, in my PowerPoint, I was thinking in bringing uh, what is now the center? Okay, we have Venezuela and we have different, uh, um, different centers that comes. And uh, since the beginning, the big center comes from all of those very powerful countries. Okay, so. Europe, we say, no one in Europe will accept uh, to say what is Venezuela and do a, a positive uh, approach. The United States is the same. Then, then now, now, but again before this, I, I say, what, what was the media when we started that process of revolution? What, what the conventional media was saying? Uh, it was saying, talk about Hugo Chavez, the new president of Venezuela. Okay, we could, we could be, many people say, uh, a bit suspicious because that was the man that came from the army and that, that is the idea, maybe an army man, man could not be good because we were used to have that kind of position, and that, that goes on the world. When the army is taking power of a country, it doesn't look very good. That was the antithesis of this. Hugo Chavez came from the army. Therefore, but then started to talk, it, it was a dictator. Well, why was a dictator? Because since the beginning, he came to change the rules of governing. What was that rule? The interest of governing for the people. So that was the media, the Western media.
talking about Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez was uh, uh, unfit to govern. Maybe he was even mad. And uh, everybody was having a ball, happy. We have mad people over there. Therefore, it's very justifiable, if, uh, if uh, this is the expression, uh, if Daniel was uh, apologizing for his uh, English, well, I shouldn't to do. I know mine is even worse, but uh, oh, mine is no good. His is very well. So, okay, sorry. Mine is, mine is not that grateful, but it's okay. I do, I do hope that uh, you get the message, okay? So, that person that we have there, we got to get onto personal attacks to the person, Hugo Chavez, because he was changing, okay, the landscape of politics, not only to Venezuela, but Latin America, because they were paying attention. Something is happening over there, okay? But when those attacks that could be personal for, for that person, it comes onto the people. It comes onto the countries because they are the ones that are deciding. They bring in those persons onto power. And it looks like 17 years ago when he started, Latin America started to go onto another path which was the path of changing. Governments were going on to the left, okay? So that means that uh, we are facing now something that's uh, surprising. Well, not really because the power is there. That, uh, those countries, there are, there was a moment when Hugo Chavez, 2000, 2005, we have uh, uh, Bolivia changing in a good position. 2006, we have uh, Ecuador going or so, follow with suit, and uh, we seeing a uh, progressive into Argentina and Uruguay. So that means that, uh, yes, the landscape is different, but uh, the powers, are always there. They cannot accept what's happening over there. So then, okay, we have the work of Hugo Chavez. It wasn't, it wasn't only to, to, Venezuela, to Latin America. It, come, it came out of Latin America. The world is seeing that uh, what we say, another world is possible. In fact, they realized in many people that were needing that inspiration, it realized that it's true, that it's not possible, it's happening because it was happening over there, okay? So that doesn't mean that everybody in that area of the world is happy, okay? It won't be like that. This will be very naive thinking that everybody, we like, I like, like the Venezuelan that is always firm for that revolution since the beginning, okay? But also we know that in Venezuela, like in Latin America, there are the elites and that they will not accept that uh, the countries, the politics, are now for the benefits of everybody. So that is, that's one point that uh, we will never forget, okay? It's a polarized region, it's true. They've been fighting since the beginning of uh, Hugo Chavez when he came with uh, his socialist uh, program. And uh, okay, the, 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 the thing is this, that elites, if, if I cont 
only stay in what is the elite, the opposition uh, in Venezuela, the right-wing opposition, they will not accept those changes because this is taking the power to them and that they were used to this since, since the, the children are born, they belong to a different society, okay? They go to schools where they, they only learned English, they speak English at schools in, in, from very little. So this is, is we, we always thought that, that we were not talking about uh, social classes or classification. We always thought that that doesn't happen, but there are all that difference in, in society. So that is, this is something that is going over there. And, but the, the, the difference is that uh, from the beginning of the revolution in Venezuela, which is so young, is like people accepted because they understood that it's a real change and that the benefit is for all of the country. You know, the, the, there was that slogan saying, now Venezuela is for Venezuelans. And that maybe in the past, in, in the politics, electoral campaigns, that somebody could put that forward. But uh, when we have that revolution, we understand that this is true because everybody gets the benefits. To be with uh, being happy with the government or being unhappy. The benefit is for everybody. So that is the difference. And the benefits are big, are great at every level. So that is the difference, what is being happening now. So, but the actual moment, okay? Chavez is dead. Okay, so we, what's going to happen? Okay. That person that we attacked so much, oh, well, hallelujah, we have somebody that uh, is coming here and uh, it's going to be very easy. Now is the end of that revolution that comes from the big powers. Every, all, all of the lines came around. It's the moment for us to take back the country. And those, those uh, moves, are happening in all of Latin America. This is just the plan, okay? So we change it, the countries are changing. Uh, then we know that uh, the big change is going to come the moment that Venezuela fails. And uh, everything, every force started by little coming here, we, from the, not, not too long ago, uh, Argentina decided, it's true, they come for elections and the people are deciding, okay, there is a change. Do they understand what we are doing after so, so much, so much struggle? But uh, we having this. Argentina, then we do have Paraguay, now we have Brazil, we had Honduras, and so on, meaning that uh, the, yes, the strength is just debilitating, okay? And now, now, all of the forces are going to be concentrated in what how we go to get the, the, there is the, there is in Venezuela actually a plan to destabilize the country okay is the consequence we, the plan is there the plan is started we know that when when other countries started to fall that is comes like the domino effect okay but the big one is going to be Venezuela. Therefore, there, all of the emphasis is there to, to, bring, to bring that country down. 
And uh, if, uh, if, uh, if Venezuela or, or say the government, people, more people, because now people understand the power that uh, we have over there. So if uh, we understand what we, we're living through, okay, uh, accepting that uh, it's been difficult, it's Hugo Chavez, when Hugo Chavez was, we have an economy, but we always have, have had very dependent on the oil industry. So, okay, we have a new, we are in a new era in which it's not, it's not only Venezuela, the, the country that is uh, struggling because uh, the prices of oil are down. There are other countries, but, but the, the powers that are concentrated in, once we do have, uh, the economy is weakening, okay? So it's the moment to have uh, not only, I, I had to, I, I, now I realize that uh, I've been leaving my, my notes away. This is my problem always, okay? So who is behind the, the, that plan to destabilize the country right now? We're talking about the big business. Big business will never be happy with a socialist country which is going to be for everybody. That's, that's not, that's normal. So we do have that democratic, the, the right wing opposition, which doesn't really have a mind on their own. They just serve of uh, the, the demands, the orders of the control that come from the United States. Sometimes we could say this comes like a fanatism saying this, but uh, when, when I say this, it's because when I been in my country, we see, we hear, there are the, 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 the demonstration, we, the government can demonstrate what is happening, how that goes, okay? So those leaders, leaders of the opposition, they have a direct connection with uh, the United States. So, and then uh, every time we know who they are and that we know what is the politics that they are applying. So that's why we say it's not even a real opposition that stands on their own and say, I'm going to defend this country. This is why when, when I'm facing people that come from Venezuela or from any other, or any other region, uh, country of Latin America, and uh, have a negative view on the politics of, of uh, the revolution in Venezuela. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Everybody can have uh, their own view, okay? But uh, the difference is, like, uh, it's easy to, to, to stand with a view that uh, then is so you are an opposition, and, and I'm talking more about the, the Venezuelan people all around the world, or there are all around the world or opposition, and that's okay, okay? But the thing is that if you really believe in your country and you feel like this is wrong, well, you fight properly for the country. But that, that's why we, are, we, don't, we do not have any respect for an opposition that doesn't have a character on their own. They do work with, with uh, a plan and uh, the plan gets discovered always and uh, we know that that comes directly from orders from the United States. So then there is that violence that has spread in the country. Again, it's not new. We had uh, in 2002 a big stage of violence that uh, uh, took uh, Hugo Chavez 
out of government for only 48 hours. And in those 48 hours, well, again, all of the countries, developed countries, all of them, in, in a, as soon as it came, Hugo Chavez left the country, they were recognizing the new government of Venezuela. You know? So we see that th this is the plan. And that was 2002. We have a, a, a good number of people killed there. And then, what was the plan? Exactly the same as is today. It's the government. We orchestrated. And the good thing is that there is a good intelligence that uh, brings all of the plans to the view of everybody that wants to see them. So there was an orchestration in 2002 that uh, was the government killing their own people. The consequences of this is no more. Everybody knows. Is the chaos? And uh, is the country that can't govern by itself? And therefore, we, the big countries, the big brothers, we should go there and take care of you Venezuelans or of you Latin Americans. So that's been happening. So there is a destruction that then I could forward that the, the stage of violence that it looks like every time they go more is it's stronger. It's a new path. Okay? So we have 2014. La Salida. He's got to go. The exit. He's got to go. Okay? It doesn't matter how many people are going to die here. Big. 43. 43 Venezuelans dead. And they don't recognize. The opposition doesn't recognize that that really happened. And eight, over 800 uh, people wounded. Some 300 really wounded that now the state is taking care of this. OK? So that happened. Oh, 2011, there was one. I have here a book, the 15th of April, 2013, the 13th. 11 people dead. And that, that happened because in elections, elections, when first election for Nicolás Maduro, so because the, the difference was slight, it, that wasn't enough, they called, the, the opposition called fraud. Therefore, the same night of Venezuela having the result, the, re, the leader, the one that wanted to be the president of Venezuela, called on people, on the country, okay, to bench, to go, to, to be against, uh, drain, to drain the rage. So that that's, is the better way to say it, okay? Be very violent. So that was 2013. But the, the, the international media doesn't really recognize this. And if they do it, it goes on. It's just the crisis, it's the violence in Venezuela. Therefore, people are unhappy against the government. And this, if, if people are unhappy, it's because it's bad. OK, it's the bad government. That's, that's the only thing. Therefore, we should go there and put things straight. So this is 2013. The next year, 2014, started a big thing. We are now in 2016, and then, and then he should go again, and all of the plans are stronger, okay? Every day, every day. So we facing now into the plan uh, a war. It's an unconventional war. Oh, everybody laughs in the, in the, in the West because they call it unconventional war. Everybody is against two Venezuelans, OK? So what, what is an unconventional war for us? What are we looking here? We have 
uh, the capital strike in the country, okay? It's no control for the country. These are foreign forces, as I'm saying, the, the, the petrol, the oil prices, they are everywhere, okay? Bless you. It's okay. So, then that, me, that m makes the country very vulnerable to the products that we import or export. This is, that's part of that conventional war we have. We have that econ economic sabotage. This is the economic war, okay, that is bringing the country to a huge, huge, it's, it's, it's a crisis at, at that moment, it's the crisis that is in the country because that there are big shortages of the basic food, the shortages in medicine, the personal products, okay? So what's, that's bringing a big frustration into in, in the, the, the country, people now, they are tired because they suffering. But then again, then again, we have a government that is fighting every, every avenue to control the situation, okay? But the, in my power points, I, I had those images of uh, the, the queues, huge queues, okay? Hours to go to find a product to eat. And then, and then, there's not guarantee that you were going to have it because at, at the end of the hours in the queue, you could go home empty hands. But, but some people could have, could go home full of the products because they were in front of you and there is not a planification. The, the planification is we do not care if uh, you have the money, you take and we, do, we leave for everybody to take if they are in front of you in the queue. So what is, this is just a, a disaster, okay? Not, not organization, but it's just, we understand. And people get very angry and very frustrated. Uh, I know this because I, I done it, I, I suffered the frustration, more suffer the frustration of uh, trying to help your sister, as it happened in my situation, because she was very sick and it wasn't my, only my case, it was many people around to the, to the point of not finding the medicine, okay? And then, no, not too far from where you go to the chemistry. There are, uh, um, how do I say, almacenes, uh, stores. stores, big stores, okay, with the products that's being denied to people, but they do have that in the store. So what, what is this? Is that a plan? This is the destabilization. That's part of the destabilization. Okay, so then we see, we see, uh, uh, we say that the women and children have been very, very damaged. The, there is a psychological, the, 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 the psychological damage in the, in the population is big, okay? But then when we see, say, women, children, suffer the most because uh, there, there is the situation of having the child without milk and that we do, the, of course the mother or the father too are in a desperate state. So what can we do? How can we resolve that? There is the, the, the situation of the women not having, well, better don't go into that uh, stage because it's, it's, it's a bit uh, difficult situation, but not having the personal product to, to help themselves, to protect themselves, okay? So that is part of a plan of destabilization. This is just an unconventional war, 
But then again, people have to fight. Just as Dan Daniel saying, we, we, the Venezuelan people, can't understand that uh, we cannot allow the revolution, our revolution, go under. Because it's, it's just not even the, because it's Venezuelan revolution. It's because Venezuela has been the inspiration. Venezuela is the path for everybody that to, are talking, that are thinking on, on a social benefits for the world. So this is, that's the reality. So that is, is like a, our responsibility. Venezuelans feel now that is the responsibility that mm. this revolution cannot go down. Okay? And that they are facing, they are confronting that war. And the confrontation in the war is uh, with the government changing, diversifying the economy, like uh, understanding that uh, the petrol is very, very low. It's, it's moving a bit now, and uh, this is a, is a good news, but uh, we understand now that uh, the economy is got to be open in, in different avenues, and that's happening. The people are organized, okay? Now we come back, uh, we, uh, uh, we say that uh, they have, uh, uh, here, we do have uh, the, the action that the government is uh, to, first of all, is the diversification of the economy f going from oil to mining, and this, this is a big program there. Then uh, is uh, the intention of resuscitate the endo endogenous economic plan. Why? Because that was something that uh, was from the beginning. And if we go to, to, to see the story of the world, that is endogenous that we, uh, people will um, develop before. So that is coming back, and that was from the beginning of the revolution, but because of the big, um, of uh, all of the benefits that we had uh, with, the, with the oil, which in fact, they, that happened because with Hugo Chavez, the oil was nationalized again. So this is the thing that all of the benefits, is, is, was always there, but uh, we didn't have it before. So now we are diversifying this, okay? So they, there are the land reform, which are producing their own food, okay? And, uh, developing the local enterprises with the help of the government. There are now farming communes, okay? So everybody knows their position now and everybody knows their responsibility to go ahead with the, the programs of the country. There are more organization in the communal councils Okay, the social missions, which again is, is something in the program of the revolution, the social missions have to be deepened now. Okay, instead of uh, going down, they got to be strong work. Uh, the incorporation of the army to control, to help now, as I say, is, is necessary. So this is happening and, and people are part of this. Something very important that uh, it could make uh, the, the whole thing of these changes uh, and the, the thinking on people is that to, to come to that, that program which is called, called CLAP, which is uh, a committee, there are a structure committee of local administration and production. Okay? Again, this is the power in people. People are administrating, are producing the products, and are administrating it through the communes. So we know we that is what is uh, 
uh, happening now. I, I cannot go any longer because uh, we will never stop from here. But then I wanted to conclude here with us, okay? To bring in the question, can it really be this country in crisis, Venezuela? So it, this is a country that uh, is being recognized by the United Nations as one of the few countries that have reached almost all of the official Millennium Goals. Okay, so what are, what are the goals that Venezuela recognized? Okay, it's not just talking, it's recognized. Have a, a colon now. They, they have eradicated the poverty and hunger. Even if we say that Venezuelans are dying of hunger now, so it's not true. Uh, that is being in, the, in this year, 2016, again, recognized that uh, there is no hunger in Venezuela. So this is the goal that we, we already reached. They are achieving universal primary education, promoting the gender equality, empowering women, reducing child mortality, and this is, that is coming from the last report given by Son Marcel, a person, the, the representative of the United Nations in the Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, in April 2016, Marcel Crescent. So this is so new, and then we could, can we really think that there are crises in this country? So another, another position, why that country is or is not in crisis, is being elected as member of the Security Council organization in the United States. This is from a votation of uh, from one, 196 voters, 182 voted for Venezuela. So it was just almost unanimous. We could count who was the one, the others that didn't vote for Venezuela. So that's okay for us to think about. So Venezuela is being re-elected for three more years to address the Human Rights Council in a votation of 170, again from 196. Venezuela now is part of the Economical Social Development Council in the United, all, all this is in the United, uh, Nation, United Nations, okay? This is the highest position into the economical system studies in the United Nations, and Venezuela is part of this, okay? So, right now, still, Venezuela takes the presidency of UNASUR, which is all of the states, the Union of States of South America, okay? Right now, after some difficulties, because others didn't as wanted Venezuela, but right now, Venezuela is taking the per temporary presidency of MERCOSUR, which is, again, all of the congregation of the the business, the enterprises, the econo economies, economies of the South, South American countries. And now, as, as, uh, as Nelson told in that letter that he's sending us, now Venezuela from tomorrow or today, today is the 11th, yes, in two days time. So Venezuela is, is, is starting hosting the 17th summit of that movement of the non-aligned countries over there, okay? So that is the question that I like for us to think. Is that really a country that is in crisis, okay? And in conclusion, for what I see, in Venezuela, for, for again, for what people are seeing in those news that came last week about the opposition wanted to oust 
the, the, the government of Nicolás Maduro. Uh, that's a day show a number, a big number of opposition over there. Apparently, that was something big, but there was a lot of money there bringing people into Caracas. But that money didn't come, that money, that money came from the, from the north, okay, a lot. And even that, the big frustration in, in those that I wanted to oust the government was that uh, they could have, they say that they could have put in Caracas 30,000 people, okay? What, what the media or the international uh, media or the world around doesn't know is that the people that came the same day and that has been for almost very, that doesn't stop in Venezuela, the move of people supporting the government was more than three times that number of the opposition. But that this, this didn't come into the news, okay? So it's okay, we showing some opposition, but don't show the ones that are really there for the country, for the government. So that will help us to conclude that in fact, okay, people of Venezuela, the, the, the country are behind the government. They not going to, it's, it could be difficult. I, I don't know, to, for, for the referendum, I, I would prefer to don't go because there are many ways of helping and there, is, there are frustration and sadness in Venezuela, but uh, we do believe that uh, even going to the referendum or helping, waiting for elections, that process of, of change, social changes in Venezuela, they not going to fade, okay? We could be a bit moving, but uh, they cannot fade because the people are decided that this is the path that uh, we decided to go through and uh, we're going on. Thank you very much for you. If there is any question, okay, we'll do it, but uh, thank you. I prefer to finish here.